Texas lawmakers continue to work to figure out how to keep what happened last month from ever happening again. Capitol hearings uncovered more details about the Electrical Reliabil Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT's power grid that appeared destined to fail. 4.4 million Texans spent days in freezing temps without power or gas. Those outages now blamed for many deaths across Texas, but as KXAN investigator Jody Barr found, changes made a decade ago kept the lights on in some parts of Texas outside of the ERCOT grid. Valentine's week found millions of Texans trying to survive a winter storm with no heat, gas or electricity. But the people living in the largest city on the far west side of Texas didn't face those same extremes because of lessons learned a decade earlier. El Paso made big changes after the winter storm of 2011 when its power company lost all eight generators in the freezing weather. From El Paso Electric and all of its employees, this was personal. Following that storm, El Paso Electric spent $4.5 million to winterize its power plants and was able to stay up and running last month when winter weather hit again. We made a commitment in 2011 that we said we're never going to let this happen again and our employees made the changes that were necessary. So what's different about El Paso? Well, for starters, it's not part of the ERCOT grid, which covers most of the state. El Paso has its own power plants and is connected to the country's western grid. And it's one of the places that implemented the federal recommendations contained in this, a 357-page federal report from 2011 telling Texas then it should winterize its power grid. In fact, regulators use the word winterization 92 times in the report. Winterizing power plants could range from simply covering coal piles to adding heat strips to gas and water lines to building wind barriers, adding insulation to air and water lines, and replacing liquids that might freeze with an antifreeze. Natural gas lines can be winterized too. The 2011 federal report also recommended wind barriers, adding heat strips to pipelines, injecting methanol into lines to keep liquids inside from freezing, and adding separators to get liquids that could freeze out of the lines. Do you think that what happened in February is indicative that this truly indeed was not carried through. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it, it's almost as if nobody even gave a damn, you know, and certainly the folks at the PUC and ERCOT that had the ability to make the recommendations to the legislature at that time didn't do it. What are y'all doing on these spot checks? Senator Roland Gutierrez filed a winterization mandate bill within hours of his back and forth with ERCOT CEO Bill Magnus at the Capitol last month. What steps did ERCOT and the PUC take to ensure that energy providers have winterized and are prepared for extreme weather events? It's something Gutierrez admits the legislature has failed to address since the 2011 storm. He was serving in the House back then. At least one bill a few sessions back died, but this year's emergency seems to have renewed urgency for reform. We've got to make sure that it never, ever happens again. This winterization bill is an opportunity to be able to do that. Only 41 of Texas's 254 counties have chosen not to be part of ERCOT, instead relying on their own power plants or co-ops and connecting to the nationwide power grids. ERCOT will gain another county when Lubbock joins its grid in June. Does Lubbock have any hesitation at this point of, of joining ERCOT's grid? Well, uh, sure, we'd have hesitation. I mean, that uh, we, we, we've We've for nearly six years been on, on a path towards ERCOT uh, because of the uh, uh, affordable, safe, uh, and what we believe, believe was reliable grid. Lubbock started down its path to ERCOT about five years ago. With its own power plants, Lubbock didn't report any prolonged outages last month, only brief rolling ones. If Lubbock were part of the ERCOT grid on February 14th, this storm could have been a much different story for your city. I think that's a fair statement. 
there is no federal requirement for any power utility to winterize for now, but that could soon change. The North American Electric Reliability Corporation's looking at adopting winterization standards in those major national power grids. The public comment process ends tonight at 8 o'clock on those standards. Now, even if those winterization standards pass, those likely would not apply to Texas's power grid. Jody Barr, KXAN Investigates. We have already seen major changes to the management of Texas power grid since the storm. ERCOT has lost half of its board members to resignations and the CEO, Bill Magnus, was terminated. Dion Walker, the chair of the Public Utility Commission of Texas, resigned. So did Commissioner Shelley Botkin and the governor named the last remaining member, Arthur DeAndrea, chair of the commission. 